Hi, you're listening to the My Body, My Story podcast. I do believe we all need mothers, mentors, uh, even virtual mothers that I've adopted throughout my life are powerful women daring to be themselves in the world, speak up. This is the 45 over 45 chapter where we celebrate rule breakers and role models, the women who inspire us to live life our way and to show their sensuality, beauty, soul and true essence. Here, we talk about what it's like to be 45 plus, adjusting to the changes that come with time, and we listen to the stories of our participants. If you have an interesting story, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us at info at alexandrawalker.com. That's Alexandra spelt with a K-S. Or visit our website, alexandrawalker.com. Hello everyone and welcome to My Body, My Story podcast and today with us Neta in the studio and while she's sitting in the makeup chair and Chitra is doing makeup for her, I'll be asking her a few questions. Hi Neta. Hi. Welcome to the studio, welcome to the project. Thank you, thank you for having me, very exciting. (laughs) So let's start our conversation and tell us 10 facts about yourself. All right. Um, Let's start with the obvious. I turned 45 this year. Mm -hmm. I am a clinical psychologist and a psychotherapist. I'm a mother of three. Mm -hmm. Mm. I came to Australia four and a half, five years ago. I am leading a team of females, gorgeous females, in a non-for-profit organization. Mm -hmm. Um, On my spare time, I love playing volleyball, listening to podcasts, listening to audiobooks, Mm -hmm. um, meditating, practicing yoga, walking and running, and just chilling out. Um, Sounds like everything to do with (laughs) self-development. Love it. Absolutely love it. I have a PhD, so I'm also a doctor, but not wearing that uh, very often. I believe we're all students of life. Yeah. So what is is a PhD in uh, psychology, psychology, clinical psychology? Mm. Yeah. So that's nice. And uh, you said you came here like almost five years ago. Mm-hmm. Where did you live before? I moved from Israel. Oh, Israel wow. is my home. Yeah. So um, I'm lucky to call Australia home nowadays. But I was born and raised in Israel. Mm-hmm. Um, which I, I always love. wanted to go there and visit oh. the Dead Sea and. Uh, Israel is a beautiful, beautiful place to visit and beautiful places, beautiful people. Yeah. So family, friends, all uh, uh, back in Israel. Um, and coming to Australia for me was really a beautiful adventure that I feel super grateful for. So you mentioned that you have three kids. Are they adults? So how old they are? Yeah. So my oldest is uh, my oldest daughter is seventeen years old. Mm-hmm. My son is fourteen years old, and my daughter is almost ten. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a mixture, like teenagers and uh, yeah, um, almost a teenager. <laughs> Absolutely. It's quite a transition, quite a transition in motherhood to become a mother for teenagers. That's for sure. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Chitra probably can relate as well. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> so you mentioned that you have uh, uh, you work for non-profit organization. Do you have your own practice, like your Absolutely. private practice? Yes. So aside from my management role and, and, you know, contributing to Mm -hmm. non-for-profit, which I absolutely love, I have my private practice. Mm -hmm. Um, I see clients for psychotherapy, counseling, couples, individuals and empowerment mentoring programs. Mm -hmm. I love working with women, Mm -hmm. empowering women. Um, 
So that's so where, that's where, my where, passion. Where, where they oh, can find you? <laughs> where you can find me? So uh, probably via my website, netaflederman. Dot com. Mm -hmm. um, that's my website. You can read more about me, my background, mm -hmm. uh, my approach, who I am, mm -hmm. and feel a bit of my vibe. I'm actually here across the street in the CBD. So for face-to-face -face sessions, I have a practice here in the CBD, Sydney. That's great. And online, obviously. Mm -hmm. In today's so world, yeah. I do. Yeah, I do Zoom. So I see people from all around the world, actually. So what's your favorite? I know every every psychotherapist they have their favorite themes. Mm. <laughs> so you said you like empowering women. Mm -hmm. And so is that like you work with um because I know that some specializing in teenagers, some mm -hmm. with the women or yeah. uh, couple counseling or like what's your specialization? Yeah. So m favorite area would be definitely adults, um, mm -hmm. couples and individuals. So my, my approach to mental health is a bit different than the, 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 the conservative um, medical mm. medical. Um, model so i see symptoms of mental health whichever symptoms that that can be diagnosed in various names like uh, depression anxiety um and so forth um so these symptoms are just expression of something deeper uh rooted in our upbringing mm -hmm. in our life circumstances um so that's you know, trauma is my language. Trauma-informed uh, counseling is what I specialize in. And I think the word trauma has pretty bad public relations. So people assume that trauma is the big event mm -hmm. that happened to you. Mm -hmm. And actually trauma is something a little different. Um, trauma, I, I can say more about that, but you know, that would take us somewhere else. Yeah. But I, I I, I do believe we all are experiencing trauma impacts. We're just not as educated around what are trauma impacts and how can we navigate and heal mm -hmm. from that. So I'm a big believer in transformation and healing. So that's my favorite work. Mm -hmm. And that type of work you can actually do with any diagnose or any presentation at any stage of life. Mm -hmm. So my favorite part is to see the transformation happening in the therapy room or outside of therapy room because I, I work with groups as well. So that's with female coming females coming together nowadays, such as your beautiful project and and other initiatives around the world, this is a very exciting time to be living. Yeah, in. that's true. <laughs> so uh, as you know that our project is about women uh, after 40, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, etc. And uh, it's uh, the age uh, when we start feeling some changes in our body, mental changes, and we see, um, we notice that we are not as we used to be, <laughs> like in a good way and a bad way as well. <laughs> and so, but what does aging means to you? Mm -hmm. My personal experience with aging is, includes a lot of growth and journey of uh, learning how to love myself mm. and how to look after myself and how to put boundaries and how to actually go inside and seek my answers and path um, inside myself mm. so for me it's a journey that is very much connected mind and body mm -hmm. um, I know we are we live in culture that is obsessed about body mm -hmm. body image um, focus on the external and how we look and how we show up externally but this is not really um, a disconnected um, as, as I see it, it's, it's um, body and mind are connected. So the journey for me is an internal journey. Mm -hmm. I find myself loving my body much more than I loved my body in my 20s and mm -hmm. 30s. So my relationship with my body is much, uh, much more caring, loving, compassionate. 
So I can have so much more fun with my body as a result of that. So true, there are changes, but what I feel is as I grow, I can embrace much more self-love toward mm -hmm. the changes and see them as um, wiser me, mm -hmm. uh, more powerful me, yeah. which is the personal experience with, with aging. And with menopause kicking in very early for me, um, th these are really ch challenges of transition and how can we embrace changes and not hang on to uh, the never moving scenario. Mm. Yeah. I love this question, which is very psychological. <laughs> mm -hmm. So if you could go back to any age, what would it be and why? And what advice would you give yourself at this age? Oh, I love that question. I love it because it, it has that therapeutic vibe of actually going back. Mm -hmm. So I would not I, I would answer from a place of, I wouldn't want to go back to any age with how I was at that age. I would take the wisdom of today with me. Mm -hmm. So if I could go back to, let's say, uh, 25 years old me or 30 years old me with the wisdom that I have today, mm -hmm. I would go back and and just let myself know that um, the validation is not going to arrive externally. Um, this is a journey of going inside and agreeing to celebrate my gifts and my uniqueness in the world and no need to wait for that no need to wait for the external validation external relationships that would uh, make me feel that i can make me feel that it's a journey it's work it's hard work you yeah. need to do the emotional work to get there but yeah i would tell them let's do it no need to wait do you think that the now they uh, generation they're more um, confident, or they still need this? Uh, the the all this they pretend that they're more confident, that they still need this validation because it's to do with the wisdom. Like mm -hmm. you have to go through certain stages of life. What yeah. do you think about that? That's such a good question. Such a good question. Having you know, being a mother for teenagers you could see that they live in a different world mm -hmm. with a world of more options uh, for women. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we can do things today that we couldn't not so long ago. Mm -hmm. So it's a different world and the discussion around diversity and power is, is very explicit. So um, I think from that angle, they're much more educated mm -hmm. and free to speak up. But at the same time, I think we, we still live in a world even more so with social media, um, Photoshop, uh, editing, etc. Uh, it's pretty difficult and we're prone to perfectionism and, 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 and really be quite obsessed about appearance and the illusion of that's how we're going to get, that's how we're going to feel happy. Yeah. That's one big fat illusion. Yeah. So it's just like uh, we think that we are more confident, but still it's the... Uh... There is a way to go. Yeah. There is a way to go. I think they have uh, more access to power, information, yes. education mm. that is the pathway and, and coming together. So social media also allowed us to reach out to each other, yes. connect and empower each other. Yeah. which is amazing that was one of the reasons why we started this project mm. in the hope that maybe we can reach some at least some of yes. young women and they can we hear do. us <laughs> and learn from our mistakes yeah and uh, not to as i heard somewhere that uh women um they they develop faster if they learn through other women's mistake, mistakes and men develop faster when they do their own. <laughs> mm, wow, that's so wise. Yeah. I do believe we all need mothers, mentors and my best mentors and, and uh, even virtual mothers that I've adopted throughout my life yeah. are powerful women daring to be themselves in the world, mm. speak up 
um, and show up with their vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's move to body image uh, conversation, which you already touched up touched on that and so if your body could talk it's also a very psychological question mm -hmm. um, if your body could talk what do you think it would ask you or tell you mm. oh I love this question if my body could talk it would tell me why did it take you so long to notice me and look after me? Oh my God. But thank you for finally doing it. I think that's, that, that would be my authentic uh, bodily response to your question. Great answer, great answer, love it. <laughs> so, but what do you think um, are the main causes of body image issues? And of course, you as a psychologist probably know different reasons for that. And at, at least main reasons. Yeah. Main causes of that. Yeah. Well, I think it's a, it's a part for all of us. It's probably uh, embedded in our personal stories, mm -hmm. but also the cultural stories and the cultural lies that we've been told for years. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we really um, gave up on our control. We, we didn't have much choice or around body image as well. So we're looking for the standards externally. We're really looking for how we should look externally. Uh, we've been told constantly by media, anywhere you look, what's the, the, the beauty ideal? And we buy that. We believe that, we buy that, and we, we develop that kind of self-hatred toward our own beautiful natural bodies. Mm. So that would be one, one big reason that I, that I constantly see. Um, so relying on external standards and we believe these um, lies we, we've been told. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you know, I, I think um, we're learning from each other. We're learning from each other. So if I grow up in a house where my mom is not happy about her body and I can see that in her body language and frankly it doesn't matter if she's going to say all the right words, if her energy is uh, self-loading and yeah. not happy inside yeah. her body I'll pick up on that as a, as a young girl mm -hmm. and I will internalize that and I would need to do much more work internally to love my own body if it doesn't sit with a beauty ideal which is rare who who of us really sits with with the body ideal um, with a sorry with a beauty ideal um, so that's that's a big personal uh, impact that you know mothers to daughters we we kind of uh, we we've inherited some of that unintentionally all the good intentions but um, yeah it's interesting I'm, I'm thinking about my story in that sense and thinking at my um, ho uh, home mom always were she was very confident uh, and um, the time I lived in the, in the family I never had any issues of thinking that I have something wrong with my body but the moment I moved to Dubai uh, mm -hmm. like uh, I lived there for 13 years mm -hmm. I start feeling this pressure because that's the place where everyone is uh, trying to look great for mm. one or another reason, I'm, I'm not going to mm -hmm. go into go the yeah. reasons for yeah. that. Yeah. And suddenly I start feeling this pressure. Oh, wow. oh, my nose is not right. My eyes are not right. Oh, my eyelashes are not full enough. Oh, this, I'm, oh my God, you know, and it was so intense. Wow. So the pressure of uh, environment, uh, even though I grew up in a family where... I never had these issues, or maybe I had somewhere deep in, and it's just burst in Dubai, but it was just very interesting um, thing for me. Wow, and that just, is so interesting, and and that's exactly what I mean. It it's it, internal and external constantly, yeah. and there is so much pressure that can come from inside and outside, 
And that's why I'm a big believer of... Um, th this is a, a term that Elizabeth Laser, one of the mothers I've adopted throughout the years, mm -hmm. uh, her wonderful book, Cassandra Speaks, is one that I keep on recommending every female I, I, I meet. Mm -hmm. But she says, we, you know, the work is around innervism and activism, activism and innervism. So we do the work internally and then we do it in the world. And I think that's how we grow most. Yeah. So just noticing what you shared with me is so powerful to realize how much external pressure we have to be something. Yeah. Who yeah. said that's a beauty ideal? Yeah. yeah. Thanks God in Australia, this pressure is not there. Like it's um, the moment I moved here, it's I stopped feeling that pressure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a very natural environment here. The women look it's up good to themselves. To hear. Yes, and yeah. I can see also some try to do artificial uh, looks, but it's not that that bad. As yeah. <laughs> so, how do you believe the negative body image affects relationships? Do you believe it can affect it? Oh. Yeah, I think we're bringing that to relationships. And I think we're putting, if we're going to the arena of talking about relationships, uh, we bring so many unrealistic expectations to our relationships. Uh, expectations to fix our body image, to uh, fix how we feel, to make us feel whole and worthy and validate um ourselves uh which that's that's again putting putting those unrealistic expectations on something external as much as relationships can be profound powerful and supportive that doesn't come from there mm -hmm. the work is internal so if i live with 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 body shame and uh, trauma that I haven't touched upon and I haven't healed from my relationship is, is not going to really make me feel better. Mm -hmm. That's a one big illusion that I think we, uh, in this modern times, we've put, we're putting everything, all expectations on relationships for, for, for love, for passion, for feeling better, for fulfillment, feeling excitement, feeling safety. It's just um, all practically us. impossible. Yeah. <laughs> so we're setting them for, for you know, big conflicts and sometimes failure by doing that and being unaware that mm -hmm. this is actually an internal work. Yeah. And also it's not our look what can change the relationship sometimes when we have problems in the other way around as well when we have problems in our relationship our look has nothing to do with that no. we don't need to no. boost ourselves with the Absolutely. artificial leaps boobs and whatever because oh. if relationships are broken then it's nothing to do with nothing the way nothing to do with look no nothing to do with look really nothing to do with look yeah how do you usually overcome body-related insecurities? Because everyone has them mm, and uh, yeah. sometimes they come up. And do you have ways of bringing yourself into the body shape you want or mm. state, let's put it this way? Mm -hmm. And also the question is, have it changed with age, the methods, you know, mm. these methods? Absolutely change with, with age. So... Mm -hmm. In my household, my mom was like constantly dieting, fighting her body weight. Uh, so when I was in my 20s, that would be my immediate go-to, thinking like, oh, I need to exercise more to look better, to lose weight, to shape my shape. Um, that would be my automatic thinking. Uh, well, nowadays I would never go there, so I, I could recognize the automatic patterns, mm -hmm. automatic thoughts that will come up, but um, already knowing that that's not leading to feeling better about myself. What I would do nowadays is find kind, loving, fun, erotic way to connect with my body. I, I'll go dancing, I'll mm. go free dancing, I'll take a bath, 
I'll go for a run. Um, I will use my erotic energy to feel great, mm -hmm. uh, move energy in my body. Yeah, I would go inwards. I mm -hmm. wouldn't choose any of the techniques of changing the way I look or yeah. transforming myself externally. Yeah. Excellent. And my last question, and I always love it. Because <laughs> um, we have so sometimes similar and different answers to that. Uh, what is your favorite quote about being a woman? Oh, my God. That was a hard one because I, I, I keep on reading. And, you and probably have a lot. I have so many, but definitely the one that I knew immediately that I want to share as, uh, you know, maybe it would reach a wider audience of women is uh, a quote by Clarissa Pincola Estes, which I recommend any any woman to, to at least r read um, uh, the woman who run, w runs with the wolves, mm -hmm. but, and, and there are a few, a few that I love, uh, but the one I chose was that just because a woman is silent does not mean she agrees. And that's from the dangerous old woman, uh, by Clarissa Pincola Estes. So that's relevant for sexuality, for speaking out, for living your purpose. The fact that uh, we stay silent doesn't mean we agree. And this is a time for me personally and calling my sisters to show up and speak up and have a voice. Yeah. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for uh coming here and sharing your story and such a great quote and uh, such a great finale of the um, episode and I hope you will enjoy the rest of your day mm -hmm. and the photo shoot and you'll have a great experience with us. <laughs> Thanks so much. Very Thank excited. You. If you have an interesting story, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us at info at alexandrawalker.com. That's Alexandra spelt with a K-S. Or visit our website, alexandrawalker.com.